I do know that some of these spirits that beg for help, mm -hmm. they're in a dark realm. Yeah. And there's probably a reason why they are. Right. You know, I had some medium that was jumping my ass and told me that, well, even Adolf Hitler can be saved. You just have to lead him to salvation. I'm like, no. <laughs> yeah. You know, I doubt that. You know, so I don't know. I mean, that's just my opinion. Um, you know, based on my beliefs, but it, I, I think it's pretty clear in the Bible. Once, once you're dead, you know, it, you know, you're in the state as a spirit as you were when the moment you died. Mm -hmm. You know, if we die in our sins, well, that means that we were never saved. Right. You know, um, I know some people believe in a purgatory. Well, that's mainly the Catholic Church that believes in that. Right. Um, you know, so I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of different ideas. There's a lot of different thoughts and a lot of different opinions. But what do these spirits have to say about it? I mean, they are the ones that are there. Right. Yeah, and that's why... I do these investigations trying to figure it all out. I mean, and it's just like I asked them about the light. This is back during a period a lot of people were sending me messages, oh, you need to guide them into a light, you know. And when I've asked them about a light, they said there's no light. They don't see any light. Well, I'd ask about it again. And finally I said, oh, you guys see a light. Am I supposed to guide you into a light? And that was during a spirit box session, and the voice answered back, that's horse shit. Hmm. I mean, you know, I have never once, during any of these investigations, and I've heard from a number of spirits, that they asked for help to get into the light. Not right. once right. has that ever, have they ever asked that. So... You know, when they say, help me, you know, some of them sound desperate. You know, some of them, I don't know. I mean, it's, I don't have all the answers to it, but I think it's really strange that you get that many help me's and investigations. It doesn't matter whether you're in this house or you go to another place that's has a lot of paranormal activity. You always hear the help me. Right. You know, and... What do they mean by that? I mean, what exactly do they need help with? Yeah, I mean, that's why I'm, I came to that conclusion that, well, maybe they need saved, but if that's not it, then the only other option that I can think of is that there's something hindering them. There's something around them that's hindering them. I mean, that's, those are the two logical explanations, in my opinion. If they aren't, if it isn't possible to save them, then I'm left with something is there keeping them from something. Yeah. Torturing them. Something. Now, Rachel's a good example. The first disembodied voice of a female that I heard, Help Me Kent. Mm -hmm. She's a good example of, well, what did she need help with? And obvious to me, it's very clear that she wanted somebody to understand what happened to her. You know, she wanted somebody to understand what was going on with her. And I think once she finally got all that out, and finally I understood what the situation was, and, you know, told her, look, you know, if you're looking for your baby, your baby's in the realm of peace, your baby's not here. I mean, there are certain things that I said and responded back to, and then I never hear from her again. Right. And then when I ask these spiritual words, Rachel, and they say she's gone, where'd she go? Heaven. I mean, to me, when they say heaven, they're talking about a realm of peace because then they say she's in peace. Yeah, and the other thing that's interesting there is that they're, they are acknowledging that she's gone and that she's gone to heaven, which means that they they must have witnessed that. Right. And if they witnessed that, why didn't they go too? Maybe they're already there. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I've heard from Rachel again. You yeah. have? Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, um, one time she says it's me. Yeah. 
you know, that was on Irish Road when I was on the Jimmy and RJ investigation where the two 16-year-olds died. Right. You know, she goes, it's me. You know, so I, that was definitely Rachel's voice. And then another time when the spirit was telling me that he committed suicide, I heard her voice during that investigation here in this house, and she said, there's hope. Mm. So my question is, is it possible that she's trying to help other spirits now? Sure. You know, uh, and these other spirits that told me that she's at, at peace, you know, are they also at peace? Yeah. Because not all these spirits ask for help. Right. I mean, some of them joke around with a sense of humor, um, and they'll joke around and say things, and they're, they're not in distress. They're not asking for help. Right. You know, um, making jokes about, hey, kick the light, you missed. Mm. You know, uh, oh, boom, I, I stubbed my toe, making fun of me for stubbing my toe in the house. <laughs> you know, joking around, but they're not in distress. Yeah. So what kind of realm are they in? Are they in a realm of peace and they're content? Well, they're... That's the thing, we don't really know. Yeah. I mean, I think if you pass on, your sense of humor goes with you, you know. Yeah. If if you're a joyful, you know, jokester in life, you'll be that way in death, you know? Same thing with if you're a grumpy old grouch, like, you're going to be a grumpy old grouchy ghost. Yeah. Well, from what I understand, Rachel, in life, from what I was told by the old timer here, from what he heard, you know, she had a really, really sweet personality. Mm. Um... She was a virtuous woman, you know, uh, she was very well liked by everybody. So obviously if she ended up pregnant out of wedlock, I can imagine how people just turned on her. Yeah, it's too bad. You know, and I can imagine if she was raped and it wasn't her fault, right. and nobody listened to her then, and she ends up dead. I mean, here she had a very good heart you know, cared about people, mm -hmm. but then ended up dying alone with death and shame. Yeah, not fair. You know, I can see why she was asking for help to get her story out what really happened to her. Yeah. And, and she probably thought it's not fair. Sure. It's not fair that I died in shame when it wasn't my fault. Right. To me, that's what happened. Yeah. And to me, when I finally understood that Rachel wasn't a shameful person, and it wasn't her fault, and I got that message out there and understood it, it just seems to me that's what caused her to let go. Now, what if I just sat there and said to her, Rachel, just go into the light, go into the light, Rachel. Let go, go into the light. I mean, what good is that gonna do somebody if that's not, if, if, if they're not looking for a light, but they're looking for closure, Yeah. what good is it gonna do to tell them over and over and over again to go into light? Yeah, it just means you're not listening. Exactly. And that's, I think, what a lot of the issues are in paranormal investigations. And some people are dead set in their minds. All you do is guide them into a light. But they're not listening right. to what these spirits are saying. You know, they, they're not getting an understanding of what's going on with them. And each spirit, each one, has individual needs. Right. Just like a person. Yeah. And some of them are evil. Sure. Evil humans, yeah. you know, that they died with an evil heart and in this realm they're in their evil. Right. You know, they're mouthy and, and hateful. 